Yes. Good Sunday night, everybody. Uh, this is not Bark After Dark. Uh, we will be talking a little Georgia football tonight, a lot of Georgia football tonight, uh, and it's uh, myself and Jay Groose. What's going on, dude? Hey, man. Happy St. Patrick's Day to everybody out there as well. I hadn't thought about it maybe once today. Um, for some reason, it just wasn't. I had an Irish car bomb in the not so distant past. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> just for a fun show. <laughs> hey, I um, I I burnt uh, I, I burnt a trash pile in the yard today, and uh, got got a. Uh, it was one of those you had to mind your distance uh, from. I, I'm a little bit of a pyromaniac, but hey, listen, let's not go bark after dark on these people. They, they tune into the Georgia show to hear about them Georgia Bulldogs, and we're going to talk about them Georgia Bulldogs. Uh, Georgia puts on the puts on the pads uh, for the first time uh, this spring. We're going to talk about that, and and some of some of our reporting, not all of our reporting. And uh, we're going to talk about a huge uh, recruiting visit weekend, Roos. And I, I don't want to start with that. I, let's, I was initially going to start with, with Georgia and, and the spring practice, but let's talk about this re recruiting visit weekend. David Sanders was in town. Um, Georgia was expecting four of the top 20 players in town this Saturday. Yeah. Um, in, in the country, uh, according to the on three, uh, uh, the on three uh, industry ranking. Did everybody make it Did, to kind of, kind of give us the lowdown there? Yeah, it uh, feels like the vast majority of that list was able to make it. And if you had a chance to come over and see that, Rusty Mansell put up a great list. Um, I believe it was early Saturday morning um, uh, that that one went up. But um, it was a it was a huge list of guys, a uh, tremendous, tremendous group. And um, had a chance to catch up with a couple of them uh, so far. Um, Jeremy Johnson has grabbed a couple of those guys so far as well. Five-star offensive tackle, Josh Petty, one of those guys he had a chance to talk to. So you can get over to the site and check that out. But Jake, what's important to me, um, in the conversations I've had, not just with the guys from this weekend, but the guys that I had, um, you know, who had come up prior to this weekend, uh, there's a consistent theme that you hear from these guys and it's about how Georgia practices. And one of the things that I keep hearing from each of these guys is in various ways, they're saying the same thing, which is, I see why Georgia is what it is. Um, and they continue to kind of have that refrain regardless. Um, these top players see the standard that Georgia has set in place. They see the standard to which they practice to. Uh, they see the level of talent in Athens. And at the end of the day, that's an attractive thing if you are a guy at that level. Um, you know, a lot of these guys are focused on winning. I know everybody's going to say, you know, uh, it's, it's all NIL. There's a lot of guys still out there who are focused on winning, who are focused on development. And Georgia's a real damn good place to get both of those things right now. So um, I think that uh, that's very encouraging for the dogs uh, that you continue to hear those being the, the main focal points is their player development and their ability to hold that standard at all times. And if you jump back to Bark After Dark, uh, when we talked to uh, when we talked to Philip Dukes, you know, he talks to he said, "Man, it's it's crazy." You talk to all these guys, and and you know, they say the same things we heard years ago when people were saying, "Oh no, that boss back on the internet." Microphone went down, baby. <laughs> um, this thing needs a counterweight so bad. Uh, but they, they said the same thing about Georgia that everybody was saying about Alabama back in the day. And, and listen, I'm not saying Georgia's a dynasty. They need to win one these next couple of years, get three out of five or something like that. Sure. Three out of four, three out of five before you can start calling it that. Um, but the guys are saying, hey, man, it's Georgia. You know, and and that's kind of what you want to hear. You know, I mean, that, that's not a bad place to be. You, and, listen, you you were in the recruiting world for a, a long time and, and before I was. and But at that time, and when I got into it, you would ask a guy, well, what is it about Alabama? And that was the response, right? Alabama's Alabama. It's not, I mean, there's what more needs to be said? And you had to accept that answer because you knew what the kid was saying. You knew exactly what he was saying. Yeah. That really has shifted, and it is Georgia now. Uh, you hear that response very frequently. What is it about Georgia? Georgia's Georgia, man. Georgia is a place where they produce NFL talent, they win, and they deliver on what they say they're going to do. Let's go over some of these guys. Uh, let's start on Thursday. Juju Lewis was in town. Um, 
What do we the know here? The umpteenth time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, I, what I know is that Juju Lewis sure gets to Athens a lot. Um, uh, he is – the guy's a tremendous talent. Um, hey, listen, I know it's easier to get to Athens than it is Los Angeles. Infinitely <laughs> sure. easier. But Carrollton, Georgia is not just like a a you know it's not he's not just driving on over. I mean that's a it's a little bit of a trek, man. Yeah, no, sure, sure. Um, he continues to come back to Athens, right? And that's you know you follow that old recruiting adage, uh, follow the visits. That's a good sign for Georgia. Now. Is anything done? Is the guy going to, you know, pull the trigger tomorrow? Is he going to flip? None of that's happened. I, I know that there are people out there who, and I see this in, on Twitter all the time, where people are saying, oh, the recruiting media is trying to push Juju Lewis to flip. Juju Lewis is coming to Athens a lot, right? He's sending that message himself. And so I, um, I, I believe that he is um, a, a guy that you have to continue to monitor. What we don't know about Juju Lewis is what his timeline is right now. I'm he's I think he and his circle are the only ones who know that. What's important for Georgia is where does this Matt Zollers visit end up happening? And when does that end up happening? He's been deep into these basketball playoffs. So when does he end up making it to Athens? I think that that's key in this. What is his mindset? How does he go here? Uh, you know. Penn State feels really good. Missouri feels really good. So Juju Lewis, there's a lot of unknown out there, but we do know that he continues to come back to Athens, and that's what you want from a five-star guy every time. Rhetorical question here for you and everybody else. Not for everybody else. You guys can talk amongst yourselves, okay? Wow. If you're listening, if you're watching, <laughs> flip the script. What if Matt Zollers was from the state of Georgia and Juju Lewis was from the state of Pennsylvania? Yeah, yeah. And I don't know. I'm really not trying to put down anything for anybody to pick up, but does that change the way you look at these guys? Would that change the way Georgia recruited these guys? Because I tell you what, man, I'm a big fan of both of them. And I, I, I think Juju kind of has some special tools that make him really good at playing quarterback. Um, somebody, somebody on our board commented a little while back um, that he's Bryce Young size. Well, other than the fact that he's almost three inches taller than Bryce Young, um, sure. Why not? Uh, sure. he's not as good of an athlete either. He, they're really not that comparable. You know who I really would compare Juju Lewis to Aaron Murray. I think Ju oh, Juju okay. Lewis, I, def I can see that Juju Lewis reminds me so much more of Aaron Murray than any other quarterback. Now, let me ask you this. Then who does, who does Zollers remind you of? I have, I have a little something in mind. Uh, who does Zollers remind me of? I don't know who you got. Let, let me think about this for a second. The, the arm talent to me. I'm going to vehemently disagree. I'm just going to go ahead and tell you. <laughs> the arm know. talent makes me think of Ryan Mallett. Okay. He, it is, it, the way that it, it pops off uh, then and the distance that he's able to get by seemingly doing almost nothing. Yeah. Um, that's where I come from with that. He moves better than, than Ryan Mallett did. He's, he's a much more mobile guy. And I think that he makes uh, better throws on the run. But the arm talent is very significant in yeah. that way. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that. Um, I see what you're getting at a little bit there, especially just from the arm talent standpoint. Um, from a tool standpoint, I think you're enamored with some of the same things that you may have been enamored with from like a Mitch Trubisky. Sure. You know, like not necessarily. I mean, obviously, I think – I don't know how their careers are going to pan out. I would say if Matt Zollers ends up being a top five NFL draft pick that, that, you know, we're going to have said yay uh, yeah. in Georgia circles. But um, I feel like just kind of this whole total package guy that, that can do everything and has some size to him. Um, yeah. Rhett Womack has a good one right there. A little, little Jackson dart to his I game. I can see that. Yeah. I think you may I think you may come into college a little bit more ready to sling it around than, and than Zollers. What's what I like about Zollers, and it's one of those things that used to be the standard, and now everything's shifted a lot, and it's a lot more into the athleticism and can a guy move around. This guy's bringing the total package, in my opinion, of size and that athletic ability. He's a big guy. You know, I tell he, you what, we're, we're, here's what we're going. Here's where we're going to settle on Matt Zollers. We're going to talk. We're going to say a six three, six four Stetson Bennett. 
<laughs> I like that. I like that. We're gonna say we're gonna we're gonna say we're gonna say a bigger Stetson Bennett. You heard gonna, it here on the Georgia Show. First. You heard it here. That's right. That's right. <laughs> All right. Um. Okay. So we get to this weekend. David Sanders yeah. is in town. I think we're in agreement here that Clemson has a lot of momentum there. I um, feel that way. Yes. Um, and listen. I, I, now, now, and and but before people bend that out of context, I'm not saying George is out of the running on this thing. No, and by any stretch of the imagination. I just feel like Clemson's the team that's really kind of got the momentum behind them. And I'm not even basing a lot of that personally off of just hard intel. It seems to just be reading the tea leaf kind of yeah. stuff out there. Uh, yeah, in, in that, terms that, of his family, there. his family's tight knit. They're not yeah. out there just kind of sprinkling around. I, I will say this though, having met his family and him, yeah. I see it like, yeah. We all know – I don't think we have to sugarcoat it. Clemson's different, okay? Yeah. They're, they, you know, Dabo's NIL comments and whatever, like, you know, they got their own I'm way waiting. of doing things. I'm, you know the word I'm waiting on you to use, but you're not going to use it. I'm not going to use it. <laughs> I ain't saying this like Jim Jones over there. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but seriously – um. They they that they're just they do things a little differently over there. Oh, but sure. The thing I keep pointing back to, and I don't mean this as a slight to Matt Luke at all, because I think Matt Luke came in, coached his tail off for Georgia, did a, did a good job, but he 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 left on a pretty rough class. Yeah, oh, yeah. A class that that um you know got bad. Georgia, not rough. It was bad. Got Georgia Ernest Green, which yeah. is great. Georgia's going to get a two year starter at left tackle off of that, may if if not more. Um, got him Drew Bobo, but everybody else is gone. And because that, of that, uh, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and say that Georgia probably could have gotten Drew Bobo without the help of Matt. Lee. I do, I do believe, I do. Believe. Yeah. <laughs> um, but because of that class, Georgia had to take the six guys it took this past year. Had to take a very big class, and that class isn't helping Georgia with a guy like David Sanders, no. who. Sees an opportunity at Clemson. I mean, I go back to the Mart Rick years when Georgia was recruiting well. They they were they recruited. They were a solid recruiting program, but it was like if they were if they really really needed a kid, it was almost like a video game. If they really needed a kid, they took and just jacked up all their points onto that one kid. Yeah. And they get they did a pretty good job of getting that guy, you know. I mean, I look back at like Isaiah Crowell and that that dream team class. I mean, come on, man. I mean, there was a lot more reason to go to Alabama at that time. Georgia won a big recruiting battle for that guy, Malcolm Mitchell. You know, they really needed a guy like that. They got him. Josh Harvey Clemens in the next class. You can talk about how whether it worked out or not. It was a highly contested recruitment. They won that battle. They really needed that guy. And that guy's that's that's where it sat for Clemson. And I'm always weary of the program that almost. And and I don't want to say desperation in a again in a uh, it's not really pejorative but in kind of a negative way, but I'm always I'm always need, a little worried about need. the desperate program. Well, need is need. Need is need. Need I'm, is need. Yeah. And 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 it's and need is a sellable uh, commodity, right? You can all you got to do, and this is not hard. You all you got to do. Georgia fans can do it themselves. Put Clemson's last couple classes against Georgia's last couple classes in terms of uh, offensive line. Like you said, six guys last year. That's that's a huge number. That's mm -hmm. massive. That's tough for anybody. And so I don't think that automatically disqualifies them. And I think that David Sanders is the kind of guy who says, I'm good enough to go play anywhere. So it doesn't necessarily matter. But if you're looking at it from a quickest way to get to the field standpoint, if there are less bodies in front of you, that's going to be the Clemson route. Yeah. yeah. Uh, good question here from uh, Dogs Rolling Loud. Uh, if Juju picked the G, do you think he could jump uh, uh, Ryan talking about Puglisi? Um, we're talking about a reclassified kid here, so that's tough. Um, that's that's it, what gives me pause. The one thing I will say, though, um, I think Juju's the kind of talent. I think Juju's got football between his ears in such a way that he could probably do just about anything he really, really, really wanted to do. And I think that is would be the determining factor is how bad would Juju want to do it and how bad would how hard would he work to make that happen? Because if, if he maxed it out and and did everything he could, I think he could. Absolutely. Um, but but also, man, Ryan Puglisi. But if, is, Pug, if Pug maxes it out, he's gonna be hard to stop too. Yeah, hundred percent. 
A hundred percent. He he is a very, I'm telling you the other day when I was watching him do rollout stuff, that cat covers ground quick. He throws well on the run. He's got some tools, man. Ryan Puglisi is a really talented football player, and uh, we'll see if Mike Bobo can kind of kind of get that out of him. But talking about offensive tackle position and and, and David Sanders, real quick, I want to point out this. Um, you know, Georgia had uh, Georgia had uh, the Petty kid on campus yeah, as well. Josh Petty. Uh, Josh Petty, really good player. Nick Brooks was on campus earlier yep. this week. Uh, um, he's one of you know a couple, two or three things that are identifiable from space. That's one of the biggest <laughs> humans I've ever seen. Sure. Um, I'm talking about Isaiah Wilson, Ben Cleveland, uh, you know, uh, the late Jordan Death, Davis, really, yeah. Jordan Davis, that big. I mean, massive human being. Um, Jalen Matthews from, I believe he's, is he from New Jersey or North Carolina? Tom's, New Tom's Jersey. River, New Jersey. Yeah. yeah. And then, uh, um, there was another guy on campus this past, this past weekend. Um, gosh, Newberg hit me up about him and I have forgotten his name already. Uh, Malachi Goodman. Oh yeah. Out of, uh, Paramus, uh, yeah. out of, uh, yeah. Same another school. Jersey yeah. yeah. Another Jersey kid. So, you know, George is, George is going to be involved with office of tackles and, uh, we've heard already, um, our man Daniel Calhoun uh, already running with the twos on, at Georgia on the practice field. And now your Daniel, I believe, has dropped some significant Got weight. Some weight. Now your Daniels, uh, another guy identifiable from space. Uh, yes, you know, giant, giant human being. So let's. Um, Georgia puts on the shoulder pads this weekend, Roos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we had a. Uh, first of all, let me ask you this: Are you? Do you share in this idea that I do like? I'm over here talking to people I know in the program, and they're like, man, this kid, this kid, this kid. And they don't really throw this caveat in there. I feel it's up to me to throw it out to the fans. As we, we had a report up after two practices. I mean, I'm over here kind of like, is this any different than camp? Is this any different than watching them at Under Armour? The sure. fact that we're hearing great things about them just in helmets only. I mean, do you, you just rolled your eyes now. Were you rolling your eyes in my reports earlier this week? Tell the <laughs> truth. <laughs> no, I agree with you completely. It it it's not dissimilar from from camp, in no, my opinion. Not. You know, it's it's people love to you know go call all these camps. You know, the, the opening back in the day or the rivals camp series or uh, the Under Armour series, the Underwear Olympics. And to some degree, until you start hitting people, that's what you're doing, man. I mean, until you got pads on, that's you're you're, you're competing in the Underwear Olympics. So everybody can look good so everything you hear definitely has to be taken with a grain of salt until people start making contact in my opinion yeah 100 percent. that's why i one of my favorite practices to dig into and you can tell because we had a report up uh sat last night uh, after that practice because rusty and i dug into it like it was a scrimmage like yep. we um we we talked before we went it's like hey do you know anybody's gonna be there yeah i got a couple guys I, yeah, had I, to double, I had to double check to make sure ba based on the amount of stuff you guys put out that it was not a scrimmage i was yeah. like my <laughs> god i was like wow this is pretty in-depth for practice <laughs> yeah you, you try to get there but uh listen um if you if you've been over to the website you've seen the fact that uh transfers uh it's in the headline the transfer shined um it's been 24 hours Colby Young, folks, um, I have not seen this with my own eyes. I have seen the fact that, and I always, I always use this thing. Um, Roos, knows, Roos has heard this a few times from me. Colby Young looks like one of those things in Men in Black with this tiny little thing that's probably up in his head driving him. Yeah. Like he's he's like an avatar of some sort. Um, he is every bit of 6'4", if not taller. Uh, Georgia has listed him down. When he goes to the NFL Combine next year, he's going to be taller than the 6'3 Georgia listed it out. He's on the Leonard Floyd plan. Uh, if you're not familiar with that one, Leonard Floyd measuring at 6'4 at Georgia, then he went to the Combine and he was almost 6'6. So that doesn't happen very often. It's no. going to happen with Colby Young. And Colby Young had a day yesterday, according to everybody that I talked to. And we heard this. Rusty, Rus me and Rusty hit each other. We had a Dogs HQ staff report last night. Rusty said that he had talked with a couple folks to mention Colby Young. I had talked with a couple folks to mention Colby Young. We, we talked to a couple dudes in group chats. It's like, man, they can't stop talking about Colby Young. Um, now, watch, and Colby Young will go out and, and won't play until game seven or something. Now, I, I, it could happen. I'm not saying it won't, but Colby Young's first padded practice at Georgia was very, very impressive. Let me ask you this. Let's 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 excuse all of that. Let's not try to predict the future in terms of what he can and can't do. 
How impactful do you think it could be for Georgia if a guy the size of Colby Young could get involved in this passing game? Um, because I think that that adds another dimension to it, to bring a body like that. That's a very unique size compared to what they've had the past couple Well, I, you know, I've said it from the jump, like when Georgia hired James Coley and, and Josh Crawford too, I, I put together a list of names that I thought could benefit from these new coaching hires. Mm -hmm. Colby Young was one of those guys because, um, again, say all you want to about James Coley, the play caller. Um, he was a he he got Mark he got Mark I keep wanting to call him Marcus because I knew a guy named Marcus Cager Lawrence well, uh, Cager Lawrence Cager he got Lawrence Cager ready to play Lawrence Cager played at a very high level when healthy at Georgia I mean put in the his, NFL yeah and 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 you know made it on the NFL I think he's still sticking around I think he's as a tight end now yeah um, but I mean it, regardless I don't know that a lot of people projected him to be an NFL prospect when he first arrived as a transfer and he's. Yeah, yeah, like you said, he's still hanging around. So did a really good job with uh did a really good job with Javon Wims. Yep. Uh, Wims was a non factor in, in sixteen. Um, Georgia's leading receiver in seventeen. Did a really good job with him. Um, you know, we I remember now that we've had this conversation and you know, you brought up I think you brought up Jeremiah Holloman, who was not necessarily a big guy. Um, was definitely not, not small, small. though. Yeah, not yeah. not probably on the bigger side, but um, you know, I, I think that size can always work for you at wide out, whether you're talking about a guy. You know, I had a coach tell me one time that the one thing about, about getting a big athlete like that, a big 6'3", 6'4", 6'5", 200-pound, 220-pound athlete, is that if he's just willing to block, he doesn't even have to have like the spatial recognition yeah. or the or the, um, or the the uh, the technique or anything like that. That guy serves the same purpose as a giant offensive tackle does. If he screws everything up and doesn't get it going, you still got to run around him. You know, it's it's just it's it's a matter of physics, and uh, you know, having that kind of length and size out on the edge is great as a blocker. Um, it's great in jump ball situations. You want to talk about third down back shoulder, all that stuff. I mean, it's and I'm told that the back shoulder was pretty kind to him yesterday. So oh. um, had a big uh, had a big uh, touchdown reception that kind of sent everybody going crazy. Uh, you can come on over to Dogs HQ and get the rest of kind of what went on and uh, maybe the other transfer who stood out in practice as well. Um, Roos, I, I want to ask you a question. You, you do you follow the team? You don't necessarily cover the team. Right. Um, we talk about stuff a lot on the message board. How do you? What would you do? And Philip Dukes asked me this whenever we were we were in Indianapolis, and and I I just thought it'd be a good question for you. What would you do if you were Georgia at safety? Malachi Starks is going to be one of those guys. What would you do? Um. So, I, my personal opinion, based on everything we've heard, and just. From a pure athleticism standpoint, I think I'd throw KJ Bolden to the fire. Yeah. Uh, I think I think I, because I think Malachi can make up for any deficiencies that freshmen might have, with, given the experience that he has. I think he might be able to help you sort that out. Um, I think to put a rare athlete back there like that, a guy who's putting up the GPS numbers, who is logging these miles per hour, who seems like he's really catching on fast. That's probably the place I would lean first. Um, and that's just me being selfish and wanting to get, you know, the exciting guy on the field. No, I, I think it makes a lot of sense, man, because my contention from the jump has kind of been like, all right, well, you deal with your lumps against Clemson. And maybe they do like they did with Malachi, right? And they, they kind sure. of split rest with Dan Jackson. And they did that until Dan Jackson got hurt, really, yeah. honestly. Um Maybe you kind of work him in a little bit slowly for that, but you've, man, I'm telling you, if you if you can get him ready to play, ready to ready to play at a pretty high level by Alabama, yeah. he's playing at a higher level by Texas, he's playing at an even higher level by Ole Miss. That's kind of what you need at that position, and then you've got two. I don't know if really I want to just see those guys play together because I don't know very many safety combos while while yeah. that, that are that talented you know i agree it's one of the reasons why i was that, excited about the caleb downs prospects is because caleb downs and malachi starks would have been selfishly that's why with wanted. the experience that's why i wanted it so badly to see two guys of that caliber play next to each other yeah. was, was going to be super exciting if it happened um the other thing though the other guy and i'm basing this off of a couple of years ago so please excuse me for that but 
I really liked Ja'Cory Thomas's film when he was in yeah. high school because he he was a guy who would absolutely put his head down and just go smack somebody. And I love that as a safety. I think that having an enforcer back there and a guy that makes you, you know, be honest with it is important. Um, and so, you know, I think he and Dan kind of bouncing back and forth could make sense as well. Like I said, selfishly, the KJ thing for me, but you go back, go back and watch Ja'Cory Thomas's high school tape that dude will hit that dog will hunt as some people might say. Yeah, absolutely. And I do know, um, I do know that, that Georgia staff's pretty high on, him, especially Will Muschamp. Um, that's something that, you know, Muschamp was very high on and wanted to offer him. I'm told he got some number one reps yesterday. Um, so I don't know. It's, it's, it's kind of tough to figure out exactly what they're working with at the safety position because the, you got to get spring practice off the ground. You got to um reminds me of several years ago. I believe it was maybe in Kirby's first year, maybe Kirby's second year, that Alden Bynum, um, in, in little, I mean, Alden Bynum started the spring as the number one right tackle. And, you know, I think they wanted to give Alden a fair shake at that job to give him a real look at it. Um, but I also think that you you have to put somebody out there that's gonna get it's going to get the, the spring practice off the ground. Somebody that you can – you need to be able to operate with a smoothness if you want to install the defense. And at least you can put somebody out there to model it in some way. And I think that's got something to do with the fact that you're seeing Dan Jackson and, and David Daniel Sisvon um, out there a lot at safety. All right, I, I want to get to this one because I think this is something that's on the minds of a lot of people. And if it's not, they need to be thinking about it a little bit more. Uh, dogs rolling loud. I don't know what that last part means. Um, uh, how did uh, yeah, who, who, Wilson, uh, yeah, anybody know what that means? Could y'all tell us? How, how did how did Wilson look at center? He says um, that center position is suddenly up for grabs, right? Jared Wilson uh, expected to be the guy to take that over. Where what have you heard there, Jake? And um, you know, I guess I mean I, I feel like this is probably one of the more underrated positional turnovers in the Georgia um, in the Georgia team this year in terms of what people are talking about. Center is not easy. And and go back and watch Bark After Dark with Brandon Capuano if you think it is, because it's not a it's not a just a pick it up and go. You got to do a lot of training. You got to be ready for that. Coincidentally enough, we've got a center coming up on Bark After Dark tomorrow night as well. Hey. Um, so Jared Wilson, from everything you hear, um, you know, uh, uh, Tate Ratledge mentioned, called him a freak the other day. That's one thing you've heard about him, you know, from a power standpoint, from an athleticism standpoint, from his ability to get out and run. He's a better athlete. He is a more toolsy football player than Cedric Van Pran. Um, you know, you, you, uh, you talk about traits. The traits are better, except for the fact that Cedric was hella talented in his own right, extremely intelligent extremely consistent and an extremely good and mature and a good leader. And so, yes. you know, those are all some things that, that Jared's going to have to aspire to. I don't, I'm not saying at all he is deficient in those areas. Sure. Um, I don't know that any player will ever in, in the, you know, in, in Georgia. It's a rarity to come sure. in. It, it, I will say though, I think it's a rarity to come in with the leadership that uh, Cedric Van Pran did. Yeah. Um, yeah. He was a, he was a very mature minded kid from the second. I mean, even going back to high school and talking to him, he had a vision and a plan and he knew where he was headed and what it would take to get there in a lot, in a way that a lot of guys do not very thoughtful young man. Yeah, no doubt. And, and, you know, Georgia had two guys on that team that were, that were elite at leading in their own right. They had Cedric, who was very vocal, and he didn't care what people thought about him, and uh, in in a way that he didn't care about. Hey, I speak up, and I'll I'll get you good and pissed off at me. This this not going to affect me. I, I I'm going to hold you accountable. Brock led by example in such a way that I don't know that that very many people can do because. You know, if you're, if you're at all competitive and you're trying to match that guy's energy, you're getting better. You know, sure. so. Um, you know, those were two things that kind of made those guys special. And um, we'll see what Dan, uh, we'll see. Sorry, I saw Daniel Calhoun question down here. Uh, we'll see what Jared Wilson can do as far as that goes. But um, the only problem I've seen from him out of playing center is when he came in against Kentucky, he had some low snaps. But otherwise, I, I haven't heard a lot thus far in spring. Um, all, we have heard one thing consistently, at least from the past two practices, and that is the offense 
is uh, is off to a fast start. And that's that's not super surprising when you consider the defense is missing Malachi Starks. It's missing uh, Smile Munden. It is missing uh, Kristen Miller. And it Tyrion is missing Ingram Dawkins. Tyron Ingram Dawkins. Yeah, so, you know, not, not all that surprising. And, and to be fair, I think that that's – Typically, the way it goes, right? I mean, regardless. Well, you return it. You return a quarterback and his leading receiver, and and you know several other pieces, and a really but even but I'm starters saying, on the offensive line. Yeah, I'm saying, I'm saying, even most spring practices, because of the way that it is, because it's practice, the offense looks pretty good. They almost yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, th- that's always kind of iffy because there's always that defense usually starts faster than offense type thing. Uh, but when you bring back a starting quarterback, it, it really kind of depends on where are your injuries, where are you missing guys, yeah. and we're just missing the guys on defense right now. And at that, three levels, yeah, at all three levels, levels. Yeah, yeah, correct. So I think that's got a lot to do with it. And uh, you know, defense is going to have its days during spring too. Um, I got, one, I got one more for you. Um, nobody asked over here, but I'm curious what you're hearing about Michael Williams kind of making this transition to the outside linebacker position. I think that that's something that I personally have been excited to see. Uh, and I've read what you guys have had to say about it, but I want to know, um, you know, what's your, what's your view on how that's haven't heard. I, I mean, I love the move. I haven't heard anything bad on it at all. It's just one of those things. It's like, you know, can you learn a whole lot when you're not actually getting a chance to sack the quarterback? Um, you know, that's, that's something you kind of look at. Uh, I will say that the one time I saw him playing it a lot in that bowl game against, uh, Florida state, he looked really good. So, uh, I, I think it's going to be a good move for him. And, uh, you know, he kind of made it sound like he's going to be doing a lot of the same stuff, just doing it more from a two point stance, which I don't, I don't necessarily think that's going to be the case. And, uh, you know, it, it he's not going to be playing inside the tight end the tackle a whole lot anyway. Right, sure. It's something that, you know, really limited kind of what he could do because you're just walking into double teams so often or, or you're at least walking into a one-and-a-half team where a guy's kind of working on you before working up to somebody else. So I think that's something that that Michael's going to have to – you know, Michael's going to be benefiting from in the future is kind of working more from that that end spot. But, I mean, Georgia has got um, – that's a, that's an impressive room all of a sudden with Michael Williams working in it. Joseph, jo- Joseph Jonah Ajanye also – That was another one that caught my, caught my ear the other day. Yeah, he's doing some of that too. Um, I'm sure that will kind of cease at some point um, to kind of get him more ready to play defensive end. Um, and then uh, another thing I really like about that group, I mean, you got Damon Wilson, you got Sam and Pimba, you got Chaz Chambliss. Um, and, and, you know, Quintavious Johnson is also working there full time. It looks like so. How's he looking by the way? Uh, just saw a little bit of one practice. Um, he definitely, no, not, no, I'm not talking, I'm not even talking about how he performed physically. Where, where's that kid at in your opinion? Hey, I, he's, he's got some long kind of thin arms at this point okay. in his, in his development. He's got a, he, he didn't come in looking like Sam and Pimba did. That's right. right. Sure. Joseph Jonah, John. Yeah. He's got a, <laughs> he's got a little bit better, but, uh, uh, one more from uh, from our man Dogs Rolling Loud here before we get out of here. What freshman has a chance to step up on defense? Oh man, this is a good one. Um, I mean, I think you got to go with Ellis Robinson or or KJ Bolden. You know, it's got to be one of those two guys. Um, I would say I would probably put KJ's chances a little bit higher because there's a position up for grabs there, it's a little in- more so than corner. It's intriguing though to for me, and I'm not saying that he's like destined to you know, be wreaking havoc next week, but that you're hearing Jonah Ajayi's name mentioned as a cross trainer at this yeah. point. And I think Rusty pointed to this idea of like, how much can this kid handle? They must yeah. think a lot of what his ability is to process this. Yeah. Stuff, to be cross training between these two positions. You don't see that a lot. And especially for young guys, they want to kind of, I think, specialize you, you know, let's focus on getting you good at one thing. This kid that's encouraging to well, that's kind of been the Georgia way. That's kind of been the Georgia way is like everybody cross trains, but freshmen almost always right. do not. Right. You know? and, and so, um, you know, to, to even be introducing it, I think just suggests that maybe they believe he's kind of, and that, it's funny that they believe that way. Cause this cat's not going to turn 18 until November. Uh, reminds me, we got to get our man Bernard Townsend on to talk to us yeah. kind of about, um, you know, about Justin Williams and Joseph Jonah, John. Yeah. We got to do a checkup with him and see how things are going, but we'll Probably do that. Some him, other time. Give him some love to uh, Chris Cole, by the way, uh, and talking about physically built. Um, yeah. So Chris Cole look, was looking good on the hoof the other day. 
Chris Cole and Justin Williams both, um, you know, freak shows, freak shows. Georgia set it inside linebacker for a while. All right, that's all we've got. Join us tomorrow night, Bark After Dark, special guest Russ Tanner. Um, hell, I don't even know exactly what entity he works for. I just know he's over here writing loans and getting people in houses and, and all that stuff. He's doing barbecue reviews. UGA Sports, he does some stuff. He's helping UGA Sports do some stuff. He's, he's losing weight, all beef diet or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> Eating whole cows, you know, by the week. I don't know. Eating a half cow a week or something. Um, we love Russ. He's a good man, and we're going to have him on tomorrow night. He's going to class the join up. And we'll be back with you Tuesday and Thursday on the Georgia show for this one. Be good or be good at it. See you.